Qualified dividend means that the company paid taxes on those, on their earnings before they sent them to you, okay? So what happens is that the dividend, the, the tax rate on dividends from, that are qualified dividends uh, will be, I think, a maximum of 23%, and it can be much lower than that. If the company has not paid taxes on their revenues and distributed to you, then it will be taxed as ordinary income, okay? In a state like California, looking at tax-free municipal bonds could make sense. Uh, but again, I'm not a big fan of bonds, and so it wouldn't for me. But for uh, people in the middle to higher tax brackets, uh, getting a tax-free income uh, usually means you have more money in your pocket than if you get a you have a taxable investment, pay taxes on it, uh, you'll have more money usually left over from a tax-free investment. Yield, it's amazing how similar the yields are right now on tax-free versus taxable types of investments. So, well, let's talk about fees for a second because I think that's very important. And um, another one of my heroes is John Bogle. John Bogle is the founder of, he, he invented index fund investing probably back to, you know, 45 years ago, something like that. And everybody thought he was crazy. Why would you buy an index fund, a fund that will only duplicate what the stock market does when you can go out and have a great manager invest that fund and provide returns 10 times an index fund? Well, the fact of the matter is 88% of managed mutual funds do not beat the, the indexes. So indexes are a much smarter place to put your money. Bogle said, uh, two, he said, there are two things that will sabotage your return as an investor. One is fees and the other is taxes. The thing you have to be very careful about with annuities is that they are tax deferred investments, meaning that you're not going to be taxed while you have your money in there, but somewhere along the line, you will pay taxes on any growth in the value of that annuity. Now, you will either pay that tax when you, when you uh, take money out of it, or your beneficiaries will pay taxes after you're gone. Death does not avoid taxes in an annuity. And that can be a rather big bite. That can be a very big bite. Remember, what did Bogle say? There are two things that can sabotage your return as an investor, taxes and, and fees, okay? Well, annuities are long on both, okay? Um, and it's really important to be aware of that. If you had just taken the money that you had in a, that you put into an annuity, and left it in the account uh, for, and you bought an S&P 500 index fund with fees that are less than a quarter of 1%, very low, low, low fees, versus a variable annuity, annual fees probably around 2%. Um, you would dramatically come out ahead, and so would your beneficiaries, because um, when you own an asset, an appreciated mutual fund or stock, when you die, your beneficiary inherits the, their cost basis becomes the value of that asset on the day that you die. So you could take, have taken $100,000, put it into an S&P 500 index fund 25 years ago, and it's worth a million dollars today. When you die, your beneficiaries collect that and they don't have to pay a penny of taxes on the $900,000 of appreciation that's occurred there. But if you had done that in an annuity, that $900,000 of appreciation would probably be cut by at least a third that would go out in taxes.